Hi students, I'll try in this educational video to technologically introduce the concept of shell, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. Well, first of all, what does it mean a shell? A shell can be simply seen as a curved plate. A shell has a thickness which is negligible compared to the other dimensions like a plate. It has also a mid surface which represents the shell. This mid surface is located at the half thickness like a plate, but it is not flat like a plate, it's rather curved. So the shell can be simply seen as a curved plate. In metal construction fields, the shell can be used in several industrial applications, such as pressure vessels, storage tanks, the roofs of the stadiums and the buildings, the aircraft fuselage, and many other applications or industrial applications related to metal construction. Now I'll talk about the parametric representation of a surface. So as, as I explained before, the shell is represented by its curved mid-surface. And if we consider this mid-surface as it is depicted in blue, we have a grid lines which represents the parametric curves. We have the X constant parametric curves and the Y constant parametric curves. If we consider now a point P as an intersection between an X constant parametric curve and a Y constant parametric curve, this point P is located in the space with regard to the frame of reference O, I, J, K by its vector position R. So the vector position R is X along I and Y along J and Z along K. Here, x, y, and z are the coordinates of the point P in the space. Of course, with regard to the frame of reference O, I, J, K. Note here that z is a function of x and y. So P can be exclusively determined, or the location of P can be exclusively determined only by its coordinates x and y. Now let's consider a point P as the intersection of the parameter curves uh, x constant and y constant in the neighborhood of the parameter curves of uh, wh when the P is located. Here, the position of Q in the space is determined by its uh, position vector R plus dr. dr here is an infinitesimal variation of r. So r plus dr is uh, x plus dx along i and y plus dy along j and z plus dz along k. Of course, and always here, z is a function of x and y. Now, uh, the, the distance or the path between the point p, p and q are not a segment. Why? Because the surface is curved. It's rather an arc. The distance of the arc PQ is denoted by dS and it's, uh, it's expressed by the formula that you see now in this slide. Note here that the formula involves dz by dx, which is the variation of z along x, and dz by dy, which is the variation of z along y. Here, dz by dx is denoted by the letter small p, and dz by dy is denoted by the letter small q as the notation of Monge. So, the distance of the arc pq can be also expressed by the formula uh, that you see in this slide. Here, 1 plus P square is denoted by the letter capital E and P multiplied by Q is denoted by the letter capital F and 1 plus Q square is denoted by the letter capital G. These capital E, capital F and capital G 
are the fundamental magnitudes of the surface. Here, if f is equal to zero, this means that the parameter curves x constant and y constant are orthogonal. Now I'll talk about the curvatures of the shell. Let's consider an infinitesimal portion of a shell uh, represented by its mid surface as it is depicted in blue. This mid surface has the parameter curve y constant and the parameter curve x constant. We have also here the z direction. The radius of the curvature of this mid surface along the parameter curve x constant is characterized by its radius rx and the curvature of this mid surface along the parameter curve y constant is characterized by its radius ry so rx is the radius of the curvature along the x direction and ry is the radius of the curvature along the y direction Rx is uh, determined by the formula expressed as it is depicted now in this slide. Here, of course, dz by dx is uh, denoted by the letter small p, as I stated before, and d square z divided by d square dx square is denoted by the letter small r. And the radius of the curvature ry is expressed by the formula that you see now in this slide. dz by dy is denoted by the letter small q as I stated before, and d square z by dy square is denoted by the letter small t. Here, p, q, r, and t are among the notation of Monge. Now, if we consider that this mid surface is a second order surface, this means that uh, z, the coordinate z of each point in this mid surface, is determined using a second order polynom as it is depicted by the polynom that you see now in this slide. Of course, this polynom is in function of x and y. And uh, capital A, capital B, capital C are constants. Now, if we consider the intersection of the zx plane with the second order surface, we will obtain, of course, the parameter curve y constant. And here, y constant will be equal to zero since the parameter curve passes through the origin O. And uh, z will be equal simply to ax squared. So the slope at this uh, parameter curve will be uh, dz by dx. Uh, denoted by P as Monge's notations, which will give finally uh, the slope is equal to 2ax. Now, in this parameter curve and at the point uh, O, the origin, x is equal to 0, so we have x equal to 0 and y equal to 0, and the slope at this point will be, this point which is the origin, will be equal to zero and the curvature uh, along the x direction is uh, equal to 2a uh, denoted by uh, small r as Monge's notation similarly uh, for the intersection of the plane uh, zy with the second order surface we will obtain uh, of course the parameter curve x constant and here x constant is equal to zero since the parameter curve passes through the origin O, and uh, Z will be equal simply to uh, C Y square, since, uh, of course, X equal to zero, and the slope uh, DZ by DY, denoted by Q as Monge's notation, will be equal to, to C Y. And uh, in this uh, parameter curve, and at the point O, the origin, y will be equal to 0, and here x and y are equal to 0, so the slope at the origin will be equal to 0, the slope along y, and the radius uh, or the curvature, not the radius, the curvature uh, of, the, of the shell along y will be equal to 2 times c, 
because it's obtained by d square z by uh, divided by dy square and this uh, curvature is denoted by the letter small t as Monge's notation. Now I'll talk about the principal curvatures of the shell. So let's consider the mid surface and uh, the z x plane which will intersect with this mid surface to obtain the parameter curve uh, y constant and the plane yz which will intersect with this mid surface to obtain the parameter curve x constant. And let's consider another direction n which make an angle alpha with the x direction. So the plane in z uh, denoted by alpha, the alpha plane, will make this angle alpha with the zx plane. And the uh, radius of the curvature evaluated uh, in this plane alpha will be denoted by r alpha. The curvature evaluated in this uh, alpha plane is expressed by the formula that you see now in this slide. Of course, here r small r and small t uh, are among the Monge's notation that uh, I stated before, and s also is among the Monge's notation, and uh, it, uh, it denotes the quantity d square z by dx dy. And if we consider another plane beta orthogonal to the plane alpha, the curvature evaluated in this plane uh, is denoted by small r beta and it's expressed by the formula that you see in this slide. And the twisting curvature with respect to alpha and beta planes is expressed by the last formula that you see in this slide. Now, if we consider that alpha and beta planes are the principal planes, it's necessary that the twisting curvature r alpha beta is equal to zero. This will induce an angle alpha expressed by the formula that you see in this slide. And if we inject this alpha into the curvatures r alpha and r beta, we obtain the principal curvatures r1 and the principal curvature r2. So the principal curvature are evaluated in the principal planes. Now I'll talk about the classification of shells based on the Gaussian curvature. The first question, what does it mean a Gaussian curvature? A Gaussian curvature is the product between the two principal curvatures, which will give, which will give finally small r small t minus small s square. Of course here, small r, small t, and small s are the Monge's notation that I stated before. So, the first case, if this Gaussian curvature is equal to, to zero, in this case, we have a singly curved shell. We have one single curvature in one direction, and in the other direction, we have no uh, curvature. The second case, where the Gaussian curvature is negative, in this case, we have two curvature, so the shell is doubly curved, but the center of the curvatures are not in the same side with regard to the shell. In this case, the shell is called anticlastic. So we have, in this case, a doubly curved anticlastic shell. In the third case, we have a Gaussian curvature positive, and in this case, we have a doubly curved shell, and here, as you can notice, the centers of the curvatures are in the same side of the shell. In this case, the shell is called doubly curved synclastic. The shells can be also classified based on their thickness. So if we consider H the thickness of the shell and uh, R minimum, which is the minimum between the two principal curvatures, based on the ratio uh, H by R min, we can uh, classify the shell into very thin, thin, thick, or very thick based on the table that you see now in this slide. This educational video takes and please if you have any questions or remarks, please mention it in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention.